Good day. My name is Dave Glover. Today, I'd like to talk to you about Lua parsers and how they're used within the NetWitness system. When we look at Lua parsers, they have two primary functions within the system. The most common is to parse raw network streams or packet data into metadata. For example, the system has captured a network session for FTP. The Lua parsers will parse out the username, the password, the source IP, the server name, and so forth, and then make that data available to the rest of the system. So you can use it in reports, investigations, or alerts. Another function for Lua parsers is to transform parse data, almost like a level two parser. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. In the following example, I have a report that shows me my top user activity. There are five variations of the username. In a top 10 user activity report, following this example, I may only get two or possibly three unique usernames. The reason for that is every username is seen as a unique value. This is how the parsers, in this case, log parsers and network parsers parse the data as this is what was presented in the log or network stream. What I'd like to do is to have a Lua parser transform this data into a single value. As they are all the same user, they're just different variations. So what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and take a look at the example of what I would like the system to show me once the Lua parser is built. We see here that there's a new key, a new key called root username. This is a key that I myself defined within the system. I could have used an existing key or like I did here, I defined a new key. We see that there's a single value in root username, yet there's five different unique values in destination user account. The Lua parser that I will show you in just a moment goes ahead and looks at the variations of the username and pulls the appropriate value to load into root user. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that Lua parser would look like. We have here the root user Lua parser that was written. Let's walk through the steps that the Lua parser uses to generate the output that we just saw. Step one, create parser. This isn't actually creating and writing the parser as we have here. This is defining the parser within the system. We see, for example, we have Lua normalized user rev2. Well, how is this represented within the system? In the parser configuration of the decoder, log decoder or packet decoder, doesn't matter, it's deployed the same, we see Lua normalized user rev2. This is how it's defined within the system and then I could go ahead and enable or disable it. Going back to the parser, so we see that step one defines how the parser or the parser name definition within the UI. Next, we move on to step two. Here is where we define the meta keys to write the result into root user. What we'll do now is we'll move on to step three. Step three is the meta callback function of where the data exists or where I'm going to look for the data to then pull into the Lua parser so I can transform it based upon the steps I have written in four and then write it to the key that I define in step two. Let's go ahead and look at step four now. Step four defines how to transform the data based on how the values look that were retrieved from the user.dst key. If we look at the first if statement, we can say, hey, did you find the string LDAP colon slash slash? 
if we go up here, we can see examples of the four different ways that logs could come in. Here's the LDAP, colon, slash, slash, bunch of information, forward slash, the username. User at domain, domain backslash user, and then user. So we need to account for all four of those variations as far as how they would be manipulated or transformed. Let's take a look at the first function or the first match within Lua Parser. What we're telling the system to do is match on the word or the letters LDAP colon slash slash. If you find it, move to the last forward slash, go plus one, and then take the value and write it into root user. If it doesn't match that, so for example, if it was Bob at domain, we didn't match on the first, so now let's move on to the second. We're going to look for a backslash. In this case, it's double because it needs to be escaped. But if we find a backslash, we'll say go to the backslash and go on to the next character right after the backslash, take the results, and again write them in here. If the user was Bob at MyCorp, we know that it won't match the first two. It'll move on to this third match and say, hey, there's an at symbol. So in the case that there's an at symbol, what we want to do is we want to go from the beginning, from position one, up to one minus the at symbol. So in that case, if we went to position zero at the match, we'd be at the at symbol which would give us Bob at. Well, that's not really what we want. We just want Bob. What we would do is we go one back from the at symbol. In the case that we don't match any of these three, so we go back to this example of just Bob, Bob will not match the LDAP, will not match the slash, will not match the at symbol. So then what we say is, hey, anything that doesn't match these three, just drop directly into the key or into the root user key. Once this is written and dropped into the system, we end up with this type of a result. We saw how the Lua parser went through and took a look at these different variations and generated the root user value. There are many different examples that can be discussed for how Lua parsers can be used to transform existing data. For example, if a MAC address is parsed but doesn't contain any colons, you could have a Lua parser read in the value and put colons after every two digits. Many, many different ways to use Lua parsers within the system to generate the data that you're looking for. Just because the first level parser gave you a value doesn't mean that you can't use a Lua parser to transform it into something else that's more meaningful for your analyst use cases. Thank you very much.